At the bottom of my monitor, I have an eye tracker that is calibrated to my eyes, and it can tell exactly where on my screen I am looking. My eyes become like my computer mouse, so wherever I look on the screen, the cursor goes. Then I can do a mouse click on the screen by staring in one place for a short time. It's not easy and it takes a bit of practice. There is nothing about eye gaze access that is effortless. A user who is just starting out with eye gaze needs to learn how to control their eyes and use their eye muscles in a different way than when they are just looking at things, so it takes a lot of practice. When she's coding most of the time, Becky is using an interface that I built for her based on OptiKey but with some extra hacks in it for coding and with some custom keyboards specifically for VS Code that, that she's using. And I can make some reasonable guesses about what will be necessary to make a piece of software more accessible um, based on my experience of working with people with eye gaze. But in reality, it's never exactly as I picture because that's not what I'm doing every day. So we would get onto, get onto Zoom together Becky would have a request of what she wanted to work on next. Um, there was one one bug in particular that took me a long time to pin, pin down because whenever it happened with Becky, I would say, oh, yes, I need to log that bug. And whenever I went to log it, I'd go, oh, doesn't seem to be happening for me. And it was a very specific order of keyboard and mouse workflow that always hit Becky because of the way that she was using her eye control system. Um, and I didn't even realise that at a crucial point in the process I switched to, you know, jumping on the keyboard or jumping on the mouse or something. Uh, but yeah, so I think it was certainly really valuable for me to iterate on the interfaces and the, the kind of workflow tooling that Becky was using. Um, and I hope it was also useful for Becky in terms of uh, practice and coding. How did you find it, Becky? I find our pair coding sessions very useful. You taught me how to split problems up into manageable components to solve. I also learned how you do your coding, so I picked up some good tips from you that I wouldn't otherwise have thought about. The uh, interesting thing about pair coding with Becky over Zoom is that she has it set up so that I can see where she's looking. So her eye tracker will show a little circle on the screen, which means that if I ask her a question like, oh, you know, how do you think we'll solve this problem? I see where her eyes go. And it's like a secret window into her brain as she kind of looks to read the comments or look through the API docs. And I'm like, yep, I know what you're about to say. And we actually end up not even having to communicate with words all that much. And I think for me, it's about enabling more people with complex disabilities to enter the field of computing as a career. People like Becky, even people like me, find that technology can provide a more level playing field. When Becky plays Minecraft, people don't necessarily need to know that she's using eye gaze. A lot of my research has demonstrated that even the basic AI inventions can support the natural development in children with complex disabilities. And so I am sure that anything we develop would have applications. I am always excited to see new accessibility features in software and new hardware that enables me to do new things that I have never been able to do before. When I can be involved in such development projects, it makes me feel so proud to be helping other disabled people like me.